Okay, while I am in quarantine, I figured I would go over more of the scientific things that I have packed in my checked bags since part one was more so about random essentials to bring that you might not think of otherwise. So I uh, will go through a couple of the more sciencey things and other knickknacks uh, that we bring. Okay, the first thing I will show, once you get onto the ship, you then have to prepare yourself and everyone else and all of your equipment for the boat to move. You have to tie everything that you have down. This includes your shipping containers, all of your equipment. If you have a filtration rig, for instance, you have to make sure that it can't tip at all. So we need things to help us tie everything down. I therefore have a slew of bungee cords of varying sizes, key there, small ones to large ones that I can combine, uh, etc., in order to make sure that everything is strapped down. The other thing is this little bag here, ratchets. This one is, uh, is definitely not a typical one, it's kind of a, a cheat. Uh, of one, but these are particularly useful in tying down your containers. I don't have that many containers, um, which is why we went for these ones, but uh, these are really handy because they're much longer and they do a great job of making sure that all your containers are tied to the wall. Most everything in my checked bag is consumables or glass. So I just wanted to show an example. I have many bags of these and other plastics, uh, which is kind of ironic because then I also have a lot of glass because I'm doing an experiment to look at certain phosphorus chemicals that we use in plasticizers. Um, so kind of ironic, uh, but half of my experiments use these, the other half will use uh, glass. But these are cryo vials. In this case, these ones are uh, four mil um, cryo vials. Okay, so I mentioned that the other half requires glass. Like I said, half of my experiments will be done looking at um, chemicals, phosphorus chemicals that we use in plasticizers uh, that are showing to be contaminants uh, in the ocean around the world and recently, particularly in the Amazon uh, River Plume, which makes sense because the Amazon River is a massive uh, amount of discharge into the ocean. For instance, I've prepared small packs. These are aluminum packs, um, and they have in them little vials that have also had aluminum wrapped around the tops. The reason for this is because there again, I can't put a plastic top on the vial because it cannot come in any contact with plastic. So why are they wrapped like this? We go through a pretty typical glass cleaning process. For these ones specifically, um, sadly, it's not just putting glass tubes in a wrap of aluminum and calling it a day. Our normal cleaning is to go through DI water first, which is deionized water, um, and then put it through a 10% HCl or hydrochloric acid bath. It soaks in the bath for glass a day. After that, we then clean with millicule water, which is ultra pure water. After that, then we can put it into our combustion oven. This combustion oven is essentially just a really hot version of your kitchen oven. It's doing the same thing, it's just reaching a really high temperature. So instead, um, in this case, it's reaching, for this one, 450 degrees Celsius. Really toasty. <laughs> um, and the reason that we do that is because it can take any organic compounds that might be in the vial and we'll convert it to inorganic compounds through combustion. Um, and this is just another way that we can make sure that it's ultra clean. Uh, 
before we then go on to our next stage. So obviously this cleaning procedure would not be the case for everything, but for this application, that is exactly what we want. We often joke that during research cruises, for us at least, we're essentially just going through and filtering the ocean because we filter so much seawater. Most of the parameters that we take along the lines require us filtering seawater onto a filter and then we take what's on the filter and carry out different biochemical analyses or looking at cells, etc. So for um, some of these parameters, uh, we have to use burnt, combusted, um, filters. So there are filters in here. These ones are GFF 47 millimeter. 47 is the diameter. Um, and GFF, they essentially look like snow. Um, I'll show them at some point. Um, and here are 25 uh, millimeters. So these ones you can tell are smaller. And then we have to wrap them. So when we take it and we use our filter, we then have to wrap it back in aluminum. So I have these packs of, of cut aluminum that have then been put in this envelope and then I combusted this envelope so that now everything has been combusted and we're all set. Along the lines of filtering, so I just showed the 25 millimeter GFF filters and this is an example of one of the lines that we will use. So this is essentially just tubing. Uh, in this case, it is LS16 tubing, which is a smaller, uh, smaller tubing. And we will put it on a peristaltic pump, which I will show later and describe later. And then at the very end here, you have this little filtration device. So this bit unscrews and you can put the filter essentially inside the sandwich and then you screw the bottom back on and then your filter is there. So then as you put seawater through the tubing, it goes through the tubing and it goes through here and as it goes out through here, everything lands on the filter. So I had to make these guys um, so that they were all set and I have a range, a range of these that I have packed. When you're packing for a research cruise, you kind of have to get creative on space. Uh, space for packing purposes and slash shipping purposes, and also for being on the boat, because some boats have a lot of space and others don't have as much space. So we're always trying to find ways to increase our efficiency. <laughs> so one of those ways, for example, on this cruise, I will be filtering so much seawater. Everything I have essentially needs to be filtered. And so I need to collect a lot of seawater. I think I'll be buff by the end of this. So I can't just pack, you know, 12 massive containers because that's going to be super expensive. And so our solution to that is to buy collapsible containers. Yes, it's sad because we're buying more plastic, However, they're wonderful uh, in this scenario because they collapse really tiny for packing, makes it really, really nice, but then you can expand it and put a, quite a bit of seawater in it. Another piece of equipment that we use a lot in the lab for cleaning is called an autoclave. This is essentially a pressure cooker, if anybody has a pressure cooker at home. So it's combining steam with pressure to kill bacteria and, and make sure that you, whatever you put in is extremely clean. It reaches the same temperature as a common kitchen uh, pressure cooker which I think is an interesting concept. But anyway, we use it a lot for cellular work, making sure that there's no bacteria in our containers before we use them. For these guys, this is a Tris EDTA buffer. Buffer. Ooh. I autoclaved the bottle to make sure all the bacteria was gone. Certain plastics you cannot autoclave. So you always want to check that first, otherwise they will melt. These ones are good to autoclave, Autoclaved the bottle and then made my Tris EDTA buffer and then I filtered the buffer to again make sure that the buffer itself was nice and clean and now I have them ready to go. 
The TRIS EDTA buffer will be used for cell sorting, so we need to make sure that we don't have any cells coming with us on this trip and then going into the machine. These are a little fancier, so it really depends on where you're at with your funding and everything, but these are wonderful notebooks. They are called Write in the Rain notebooks, and the reason I love them so much and why they're so popular in uh, my bubble is because the pages are waterproof. So you don't have to worry about taking notes and then if a storm comes and something spills or you're pipetting and, or pouring and then a wave comes and you, whew, you don't have to worry about your notes vanishing. So uh, they are, like I said, more expensive, but if you're in the place to be a little spoiled, definitely try to get these um, because they're wonderful notebooks. Okay, the last thing that I want to show is something that I think will be extremely important on my trip, and that is my binder. We have stickers for our cruise, and of course my name on there, and the reason I wanted to show this is because this is essentially my precious baby on this trip. So, for example, on the first page here, I have my cheat sheet. Ooh, that tells me all of my parameters I'm taking, all of the filters that I will need for it, how many and where and how they will be stored. And the idea is just so that I have a really easy thing to look at when I'm right in the middle of something, I can double check to make sure I'm not going crazy. And then beyond that, everything else is an overview of all of my protocols. That, this is hard to maneuver. <laughs> oh, that I'll be taking on the ship. And the reason I have them here is because in the little sheet here, they are waterproof, which means I can hang them up or tape them or something. And then I also have pictures to help guide me when I'm tired, etc. So I have all of these. I have manuals for the equipment I'm using, for example. Everything that I may need to know on the fly. So this one is something I highly recommend for any research cruise that you are on to make some sort of a binder for yourself or some sort of protocol to make sure that you're all set to go. With that, I won't ramble any longer. I am almost done with quarantine. We leave tomorrow. I'm not sure what uploading videos after this will look like because the ship, I believe we have Wi-Fi, but I'm not sure if we have enough bandwidth to upload videos. I'm thinking that might be a no. So from here on out, it will probably be smaller Instagram posts, etc. until I return. And in the meantime, I will be taking lots of footage that I can make videos for when I come back. But who knows, we'll see what happens. Maybe I am able to upload things. So we'll have to play it by ear. 